Hey guys, my name's Daryl, and you're watching The Factoid. So does having a bigger brain make you smarter? Well, let's find out. Before I start, I just want to say that the brain is the most amazing thing in the entire universe. Some people could say it's the ocean, the stars, the animals, or even your grandma's cooking. But without something to understand how valuable those things are, without something that can realize that those things are amazing, are they truly that amazing? Because the only thing that can put value on things like that is the human brain. And that's beyond amazing. And I thank my brain for helping me formulate that conclusion. So does that make me smart? Well, what is smart? It's a common fallacy to believe that just having a larger brain in general makes you smarter. Because if that was true, humans would not be the smartest organisms on Earth. That would go to whales. And more specifically, the sperm whale. The sperm whale has a brain that's only five times larger than that of humans. Now I say only five times larger because I believe that is impressive on our part. Being that sperm whales are much larger than just five times our size. So yeah, that's one for humans. Yay. But also, elephants and dolphins have larger brains than us. But does that make them smarter? No. But if you notice, those animals have pretty complex ways of living or motor skills. And that's what their brain is dedicated to understanding and processing. The reason why the sperm whale's brain is so big is because it's got such a massive body. It takes a lot of energy and a lot of processing power to be able to get those limbs and things that move accordingly. The same goes for elephants and dolphins. But are they smarter than humans who have a smaller brain than them? No. Otherwise, you'd see giant dolphin societies underwater. And I would love to see that. No, no, really, I would love to see that. That'd be amazing. <laughs> the real sea world. But what about ratio, then? If you were to compare body mass ratio, the human brain is about 1 40th the size of our mass on average. On average. And if you were to compare that to smaller organisms, such as ants, their brain takes up about 1 7th their entire mass. The hummingbird's brain is about 1 17th the mass of its body. So to them, their brains are large, but once again, they're not that intelligent. And what does that mean? The Smurfs are a lie. They cannot be as smart as they are. It's wrong. It's wrong. So what we can determine from this is both of those don't determine how smart you are specifically, though they do influence it. But a good thing to look at is Neanderthals. And yes, it's actually pronounced Neanderthal. I know it's weird, but it makes you sound so intelligent. Neanderthals are probably the closest organism to humans ever, even closer than chimpanzees. And they themselves had larger brains than humans. They also had complex tools, language, and maybe even an understanding for the afterlife, since we found them burying their dead with flowers. Not necessarily religious, though. But they did have one problem, and this is a problem I want to make sure you are aware of certain parts in their brain that worked with language communication were not as developed as humans. Humans love to talk. We love to talk all the time. We love to socialize. We love to be in groups. Neanderthals didn't. Neanderthals tended to live in very small groups without really going far and communicating with other Neanderthal groups. Where humans did a massive amount of trading. And with trading, you trade technology and ideas. And Neanderthals may have been smarter than humans on certain things, such as technology for a while. When we find humans, we tend to find them with just a kind of a universal rock. Where we find Neanderthals with specialized smaller rocks that they use to work different things. We were able to outdo Neanderthals because of our language comprehension and social abilities that our brain allowed us to be able to do. And that benefited our survival. So with all you've learned so far in mind, let's look at the most famous brain and probably the existence of our species. Einstein's brain. Einstein died in the late 1950s, and his brain was stolen shortly after his autopsy. It disappeared for about 40 years while the guy who stole it tried to understand the secrets of Einstein's brain. And he found nothing. When his brain resurfaced in the 90s, we did research on it. And you know what we found? Einstein's brain was no bigger or weighed any more than the average male's brain. But he had something unique. What we found that was so unique about Einstein's brain is that he was missing parts of it, and in their place was other parts that were even more developed due to the access of free space, you could say. He also had a higher than average amount of glial cells. Glial cells look like that. 
They send information around your brain. Having more of them means that you're able to understand and comprehend certain things better. Like if you play a piano a lot, glial cells will develop and be able to transfer information around your brain allowing you to be able to understand and being able to participate in whatever activity much more efficiently. So, yes, practice does make perfect, or improvement. So what was different about Einstein's brain is in his parietal lobe, he was actually missing a section of it. And being that the parietal lobe is divided in different sectors that do different things, the sector that was missing was then replaced by another sector, called the inferior parietal lobe. And his parietal lobe in him was actually 15% larger than that of the average man. But I want you to take a guess, what do you think the inferior parietal lobe does? Well, it works with mathematical comprehension and visual and imagery movement comprehension. Which are two great things to have if you are a physicist. And what does that mean? His brain was more developed in areas that are affiliated with complex thought. There are consequences to different areas in your brain missing. But if you'd like to learn more about that, I advise you to venture out on your own. So, technically, the size of his brain didn't matter on his intelligence, but specific lobes. Which is specifically what has made us as an organism so much smarter. Having a much more developed frontal cortex compared to other primates, like this chart shows, really proves how intelligent our species is. So, to answer the question, does the size of your brain really impact how smart you are? And I guess the answer to that is, it all depends on what part of your brain is bigger. So the next time you want to leave a remark about how smart someone is, but you don't want to sound dumb by saying you must have a big brain, tell them they have a highly developed brain, or a very well-established cerebral cortex, or whatever lobe involves whatever they're smart in. It won't sound stupid at all, trust me. So with all that said and done, thank you for watching. My question for you is, what do you think is the most amazing thing in the universe? And remember, never stop learning. It will definitely make you smarter. Thanks for watching.